Hi, this is Ginger Minch from season seven of RuPaul's Drag Race, and you're watching Jamar 84. Thank you, baby. I love you. Love you too. What's going on YouTube? Jamar. What's, what's, what's going on YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamar Defoe here once again, and we are here to review the grand finale of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7. And um, I'm really, there's really not going to be much to say necessarily. Um, I really just want to talk about my favorite looks um, from the grand finale, a couple moments that happened and things that were discussed, and... Miss Congeniality and the winner. So, honestly, this this should actually be relatively short. <clears throat> but this season, it was very... I don't know what it was about this season, but it's almost like we weren't as invested emotionally, it seems like. I'm not sure if it's because we felt like some eliminations weren't the way they should have been. Or, you know, do people even agree with the top three at all? Uh, me, personally, I kind of wanted... Initially, when it was still 14 Queens, my first winner, or the first person I wanted to win was Max. I, I think that he was a very different aesthetic to the show, and, you know, he was just one of my favorite contestants. So once he was eliminated, okay, I'm like, okay, who remaining do I feel like is likable enough or has that factor that could you know be a measure next to a superstar and i thought it was katia and when she was eliminated it was kind of like hmm it was like i like everybody else but i still wanted either max or katia to be the winner but i don't know what it was it's even like those people who went to the live taping of the finale said that it was kind of there were a lot of seats that weren't filled so i don't know but we're gonna quickly talk about it. This year, he decided to do something a little bit differently. He actually had each of the individual queens do one last individual lip sync, which is different, which you know gives them a chance to shine on their own and not have to worry about competing or against somebody else, you know, while they're performing. So they did songs that were tailored to like their drag persona. Uh, Ginger Minj did like a gospel, you know, type thing going on. It was kind of cute. It was, she was, you know, very animated. It was it was very entertaining to watch. I'll give her that. Pearl did like a, some song called Sleepwalker. And she had like a mirror and people dressed in unicorns. And she was, you know, giving her little ticks. She didn't, I don't think she did the Pearl Smash. I don't think she did the Pearl Smash in this particular performance. But it was still very interesting to watch. She's still just kind of gliding like, ooh, ah. Mm, you know, that's, that's kind of what she was giving. And Violet, let me tell you, Violet literally just put on a one-woman burlesque show just then, and it was amazing. Like, I, if you just look at Violet's shoes, I always look at Violet's shoes, those shits are high. You talk about high heels, this bitch is on her, like, ballerina tippy toes when she be walking. I'm just like, do it, bitch, okay? Do it. <laughs> um... But they were all amazing shows. Uh, oh, I could talk about the warm-up. Now, the warm-up wasn't aired on the grand finale. The warm-up was, you know, on YouTube. Uh, but Bianca Del Rio hosted it. Of course, she came out, told some jokes. Love Bianca. Bianca can host anything, and I'll be there. <laughs> um, Adora Delano came out and performed her single, I Adore You. And her... <laughs> Poor baby, her she has some sunglasses on and they got caught in her hair <laughs> and she tried her damn just to get that shit out. It, it, it just wasn't working, poor baby. But you know, bless her, bless her little heart. She, she you know, did the professional round, just kept on going, <laughs> just kept rocking with it and made it a joke. But my favorite, well actually no, my top two favorites was uh, Alyssa Edwards and the House of Edwards, which is, you know, of course, Alyssa Edwards, Laganja, Stranja, and uh, Rama, Shangela, they all came out and did, you know, individual numbers at first, and they came together. Uh, Y'all know I love that Shangela, it's time to work, 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 it's time to work, work, 
work. Hey, hey, you know, <laughs> that's my shit. And um, it was cute. They had a little cute little dance number. They all look good. I'm like, go ahead, dancing queens, yes. But my favorite, and honestly, the word about was Miss Latrice Royale, baby. I did, I thought you know I had never even seen Latrice perform before. I never really thought about what kind of performer she was. I think just based off her drag, I thought she was kind of like the uh, pageant performer that had you know the really really dazzling gown, the you know the really really uh, I don't want to say obnoxious, but like the really just out there big hair. And, you know, just did the, you know, the lip sync, the standing in the corner, giving, like, face. You know, that's the kind of a drag performer I thought Latrice was. And ugh, she had this song that was like a remix of her, like, her taglines throughout the season. And uh, she was, at first she was giving that, you know, the little walk around, you know, be pretty and, you know, just do this. But then once that beef started dropping, she was like, uh, 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 uh. Like, she was giving it. I was like, oh, okay, Latrice. Let them know that you can move, bitch. And then this bitch fell into a split. Yes. <laughs> if y'all have not seen that performance, I'm telling you, go to the Wild Presents YouTube channel and check that shit out. Wild Presents actually just uploaded like a shitload of, of bonus clips from the Untucked throughout this season, which they were only like a minute, two, three minutes long. I'm like, y'all could have just added this onto the episode. Why even leave it out till now? Like, there was not, there weren't really parts in it that were really like had something really worth holding back until now. They could just put that shit in the episode. But make sure y'all go check out that Latrice performance and the House of Edwards performance. Awesome. But back to the finale. Um, you know, of course, and uh, after each top three performance, they ask them questions. And um, of course, their family and friends came up on the screen. And I think it was really nice that uh, Ginger's father came up. Because, you know, they had that their whole issue about, you know, I didn't know my father. He left us, and I don't really. He doesn't I feel like he doesn't know me. He doesn't approve of me. He may not love me. You know that whole spiel. And his father came up and was like, you know, I can't believe that you would feel like, you know, I don't love you, and that if you feel like that, I feel like I failed as a father and all this other stuff. So of course it was an emotional moment. And if that was genuine and not, you know, made for television, then I I really enjoyed to see that kind of relationship be rebuilt. So that was nice. That was nice. Um, Pearl, Pearl and all his friends and his uh, grandma, I believe, came up there and said a lot of nice words. And they just all remembered how he was as a kid. It's like, well, he used to walk around in, in his sister's tutu. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was really, really nice. And of course, Violet had the same. It was just really nice to see, like, uh, the people in their lives, like their support system, talk about who they were and how they, you know, came up, how they struggled and overcame certain obstacles it was really nice and you know those of us in the lgbt community who have similar struggles can kind of relate to uh what that's like and to see somebody kind of come out of that and express themselves in a way that's probably you know frowned upon by a large part of the world was really nice so then they get to the other queens and of course they you know they ask them questions about you know, of course, they brought out the Tempest versus Candy Ho initial reaction on the first episode about him calling her old. And uh, another good moment, what they had was uh, Jasmine Masters was talking about how she used to dress up and go to Patti LaBelle concerts and uh, she would pull her up on stage and things like that. And then uh, RuPaul was like, you know, I have a message for you or a surprise for you. And then uh, it was a clip of Patti LaBelle saying hi, you know, I love Jasmine Masters. And she was just like, oh, my God. Like, I love to see moments like that because it is something that, of course, as a fan on the end, you will never forget. And it's just something that just, like, if you love somebody and you idolize somebody so much and you know that they're this big, you know, star and they have all these fans, but yet somehow you managed to stand out in such a way that they, they were able to acknowledge you and thank you for your support. Like, that's a feeling that is indescribable and just makes your heart explode. <laughs> so I am I like to see people have that moment, and watching Jasmine have that moment was really nice. Um, to my favorite uh, dress and costumes and things of that nature, I think my favorite was... 
I can't even. Okay, it's it's these three people. Regardless of how I feel about them during the show and who they are, I'm just going by their outfits upon tonight. On a, a ranking from my favorite to to not even least favorite, but of the top three, at number three is Candy Ho. Candy Ho had another box hair, but it looked kind of like a. It kind of looked like one of them little fountain, uh, fountains, water fountains that people be having in their yard. <laughs> The Chinese water fountains, can't even see my other hand. But it was it was very interesting. And then this this dress just had all this tool. And she did this little spin around drop. And it was just like, yes, Candy. <laughs> Come on, Candy. And second was Miss Kennedy Davenport. I don't even really remember too much of what that dress was looking like, but it was this hair, bitch. That hair looks swoop serving me all Jimmy Neutron boy genius. <laughs> And had a little pink streak in it. I'm like, come on through, Kennedy. Um, and then my favorite was actually Bianca Del Rio. When she came out and presented that crown, homegirl was painted completely in silver glitter. I was like, this is very interesting. Because, you know, Bianca Del Rio usually sticks to pageant gowns. <laughs> and so it was very interesting to see her kind of be overly flashy so it was like okay i like this i wonder how she got that off though that doesn't look like that comes off really easy um <laughs> uh let's see da, 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 da. i think i covered everything as far as fashion -wise. everybody else looked good nobody really looked bad but if i had to choose like my least favorite outfit from all the queens and i hate to say it because i love her so much but it was Max. I didn't really understand it. I feel like that yellow jacket that he had with the straight hair, it seemed, excuse me, it just didn't seem, it just seemed off. It seemed like I've seen him wear too many awesome garments and I just feel like there was so much more he could have picked out, but it is what it is. Oh, oh excuse me. But we get to Ben de la Creme and... <laughs> Uh, Michelle Visage in the titty to titty conjoined twin Ginger Binge and Sasha Bell outfit. I'm like, okay, y'all childish. <laughs> and so they wanted to come and announce Miss Congeniality. Now, I feel like everybody and their mama knew who Miss Congeniality was this season. It's Miss Congeniality is almost like the person who was liked the most, who got the furthest, but just didn't get quite in the top three. And it was a unanimous vote. It was Katya, of course, and it was well, much well-deserved. I kind of felt like Katya should have won, but that's neither here nor there at this point. Um, yeah, so congratulations to Katya. And there, this is the moment, right? The, okay, so they're about to get ready to announce the winner. And of course, RuPaul gets on my fucking nerves. Let me tell you why RuPaul gets on my nerves. So he's like, you know, the whole, of course, the whole dramatic, and the winner! Of RuPaul's Drag Race season seven is drum roll, and then he's like eh. Katya, and I'm just like, bitch. I thought I really did for like a half, good half second, that he was just going to say, "Fuck what y'all thought." I'm not picking any of the top three. I made a terrible decision, and I'm just gonna put Katya as the winner. And mind you, that would have made me happy, but that would have really just been a giant fuck you to Ginger, Violet, and Pearl. <laughs> oh, God, that would have been a big-ass fuck you to them, but he just said, can I get a sip of water? Basically just playing it, playing us. I'm like, RuPaul, you, you play too much. I ain't got time. I'm ready for this shit to just get me over with, because y'all have, I just been, ugh. I just want this shit to be over with, so... The RuPaul Drag Race Season 7 winner is Violet Chachki. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? As I thought about it, I for some I just really didn't want Ginger to win. I like Ginger, but I just I just really didn't mm -mm. I if, if I had it my way, I wanted Pearl to win just because she was my favorite, you know, of the three. But Violet winning really makes all the sense in the world because literally Violet didn't have a bad runway look. Violet was never in the bottom two, uh, never even in the bottom three, I don't think, never even up for consideration of being eliminated. 
or been the bottom two. And really, in any of the challenges, she was never bad or somebody was just always worse, <laughs> I guess. So she really performed the best out of the whole season. People may not have liked her, you know, personality-wise towards the beginning. I guess she sort of blossomed towards the end. But she really put the best foot forward, especially, like, that damn Death Becomes Her Corset Air Oxygen Tank outfit alone. Amazing. And then her Hello Kitty, amazing. The only outfit that I just really didn't too much care for, and I agreed with Miss Elvisage, was that last outfit, which was considered her best drag. Didn't really like it. Uh, everything else, I loved it. So congratulations to Violet. She is the new reigning queen. And so we're going to see how this thing goes. Now I'm going to end quickly talking about this. <laughs> Miss Fame, I just recently saw Miss Fame this past weekend. Great performer, really, really nice. Uh, loved her. She looked gorgeous in person, just amazing. She has this new album out called Beauty Mark with that song Rubber Doll. I mean, it's cute, but it's almost just like drag queens are, I don't know if they're pressured to release dance music after they're on the show, but it just seems like none of them really, it's like the music is never really put much effort into. It's almost like, I mean, I guess because none of them, most of them really aren't singers, but it just seems like the music just is kind of just something for them to just say they have music out, if that makes sense. It's like, and then Pearl, Pearl has an album out, I just saw, but it's just an EDM album. It's really just an album of beats. Like, there's no, like, I think there's like a couple people who have had vocals on it, but it's really just an album of beats. And it's like the cover is Pearl not even in drag. <laughs> Call pleasure. Mind you, it's still a nice picture, but it's still just odd and off to me. And last night, me and my friend were watching uh, Ginger had put out a new video called Ooh La La. Now, that actually had some vocal to it. She was actually performing and giving, you know, a performance. I actually, you know, enjoyed that a little bit. And Violet Chachki has a music video. I'm like, God damn, everybody putting that motherfucking music now. It's called Betty. That was a bit much. That was like almost on the border of electronic and heavy metal. Like I couldn't really understand too much of what she was saying. She did have like a housewife dominatrix type thing going on. It was cute visually, but the sound was just too harsh for me. I don't know. I just couldn't. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And... Um, yeah, everybody should be some music now, so we gonna keep seeing. We're gonna see how this is gonna go from here on out. Are they gonna promote this, or is this just gonna be some bullshit that they just put out just because they were on Drag Race, so they can have something to sell to make them some money? But anyways, like I said, congratulations again to Violet Chashki, our new reigning queen. Um, they just started. I think they're gonna start filming season eight this month or next month. The people who are on it should have already been casted by now, and they know who's gonna be on the show, or the people who are on the show know they're going to be on the show. They may not know everybody else, but the cast, I believe, by now should be picked. So we're going to start this whole cycle all over again. <laughs> and um, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching through this entire season. It's been great. I enjoyed it. Thank you for everybody who's been watching since the very beginning, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Like, like, share, subscribe. Jamar. Washington. Washington. Washington.